Hello and welcome back everybody. My name is Saiken and today we are going to play a round of XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. It is better one and this mod has freshly been released. I wanted to give it a try and see uh, for myself how they have implemented the Long War of the Chosen mod. I'm pretty excited about it. Long War always has been a good mod. Not 100% my type of tea but uh, I felt um, since a couple of viewers have suggested going for it that I will give it a shot. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar or aware what Long War is, it's in general a complete overhaul of the normal XCOM 2 game, making it longer and harder and changing a couple of the rules. Um, but don't uh, be afraid uh, if you don't know what it is we are going to go through it together and i explain quite a bit about it we're going to play on legendary difficulty and we are going to toggle on a few advanced options number one i want to start with the templar because i like the templar quite a bit uh, specifically after our last run um, and we're going to enable the chosen Preci uh, precision explosives are already uh, enabled uh, uh, time turner would uh, make it easier so we're not going to do that uh, we are also not prolonging the length of the avatar project because it would make it uh, uh, more easy um, grim horizon uh, is a uh, normally something that standard xcom offers the developers have uh, said that they cannot remove it because uh, it's hard coded so that has nothing to do with long war just pretend it wouldn't be here dark events are handled differently yeah, and uh, Better Strike likewise. So we're going to play with the Chosen and start with the Templar, pretty much uh, the most difficult uh, way to play Long War. And of course, we're going to play um, Iron Man. Um, enable Lost and Abaddon, uh, Abandoned. Uh, we're going to leave that uh, out. The uh, designer said this is causing instability, so the storyline missions should be left um, alone. But we're enabling all of the content which essentially means all of the beautiful uh, DLCs. We are playing with Sparks, we're playing with um, uh, with uh, Psionics, we're playing yep, with everything that you know from the base game as well. Right off the bat, we're going for Gatecrasher and you will see a few differences already. Long War allows you to start with, I would say, better equipped and uh, simply more soldiers. We're going to do the Gatecrasher mission with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, eight rookies. And uh, it will be uh, reasonably more easy, so you're not going to be thrown into the game with only four rookies. However, the game is soon going to be much, much more difficult. Another thing to know, um, in Long War they, cho uh, they cho uh, changed the um, corpse mechanic. You are no longer just receiving corpses on every single mission which means gathering corpses is really, really, really seldom. And this mission is one of the few exceptions, so we got to be careful not to blow things up. As always, with any mission um, that's called Gatecrasher and involves rookies, we're going to use high ground to our advantage, just so that we're having better chances of actually hitting something. Um, oh yeah, for our team, before I forget it, uh, Roby uh, is uh, going to be within it. Um, Mitchell, uh, Mitch Mitchell is going to be in it. Tracy Elliott, a random recruit. Uh, Dark Tower Noxus, Zirkim, Fury, um, who is our second um, uh, Templar. So Hogbite is not with us. Renven and Edgar Alien Poe. If you want to see your uh, personal uh, soldier within uh, within this uh, squad, uh, now is a great time to leave a comment down below how uh, the soldier would look like. And I will um, edit him to the character pool as soon as possible. Doesn't mean that you immediately get into this run, but it very much means that you have a high chance of being drafted for future runs. Because you can see the character pool is currently, I think, seven or eight characters deep. To victory. Good, Dark Tower Noxus moves up. Zirkim moves up. Good old Gatecrasher. I'm I'm 
Let's see if we can get a sound uh, bit going and hear where the enemies are. One thing to know about uh, Long War 2 is the Advents have also been overhauled quite a bit. So you will not only see more, more diverse, but also more intelligent uh, acting Advents, which is refreshing. One of the core concepts that's different, and I can already uh, tell you about that, is we're going to see that cover is no longer as easily removable as it has been before. So grenades in particular have been nerfed significantly and no longer provide uh, really good cover removal mechanics. Specifically, uh, like more sturdy cover can cannot re uh, can, can almost not be removed at the beginning of the game. Later it will change, but for now just uh, keep that in mind. With the cover mechanic, it also changes the firefights quite a bit, because we're seeing uh, that firefights are not only prolonged, but they are also uh, different. They okay. really involve uh, taking cover and flanking. So good fun. Let's move everyone into a solid cover position. We heard that there is a pack somewhere around there. Sierke moves up. Roby moves up. As good as high high ground is, we cannot just rely on it solely. So gotta get close enough. The bonus for weapon proximity is even higher than the one from high ground. High ground, by the way, in long war has been nerfed, so it no longer offers you a twenty um, aim bonus. Uh, the aim bonus has been reduced to plus ten. And there is the first pack of enemies. There is the first pack of enemies. Interesting. I think we can go with a nice little Overwatch trap here. Normally not my style, but since uh, they have clustered up so well might as well use it so we don't want to kill them with grenades remember uh, we want to make sure we want to make sure that uh, we can recover the corpses which means we're going to place a grenade here to just damage everything moderately plus also shred, uh, shred the um, drone and make it easier to kill it good no one died and surprise Okay, well, that's a decent start. How about we kill this guy? Good, Fury gets some focus. I love it. Dark Tower Noxus has um, above average aim. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Uh, not created equally is uh, uh, is enabled by default. So you will see quite different um, soldiers. Dark Tower Noxus, for instance, started with uh, 67 aim. Uh, 65 is the average, so Zirgim is just right there at the average. Having lower stats is not the end of the world, by the way. And there are plenty of mechanics to compensate for it. Plus, I imagine that they do have the Shadow Chamber, uh, the Covered Ops missions, 
which should give another permanent bonus as well. So that was the first pack. On my way. Okay, I'll go. What's over there? That's a very poor position to no, to end your turn. You're going there, Renman. Well, of course, that triggered another uh, pack, but that's okay. So you can see there are other advents. This here is an advent uh, scout, for instance, long, longer range uh, viewpoint. And this, uh, lo as soon as they uh, take a shot, they also get an overwatch. Uh, this here is an advent grenadier. Engineer, sorry. Grenadier looks similar. Um, the engineer, however, does have grenades. So. Then there is an advent gunner, which is, you could imagine, it's, it's kind of the heavy gunner equivalent to, uh, to the normal um, grenadier that XCOM um, usually deploys. Okay, we could kill this guy. Moving on target location. I am wondering, like, if we were to use a grenade over here. That should probably soften him up a bit. Yeah, let's go for it. I want the engineer down. He took three points of damage, good enough. That could be... An instant kill. And I think, by the way, that this is the last pick, so... Once they are down, um, the mission is over. We got the first loot, a hair trigger. Let's make sure that we get the uh, grenadier, uh, the gunner over there. Unfortunately, although we were flanking it, we did not hit it. Overwatch, 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 and Overwatch. They should be moving closer and thus uh, creating opportunities for us to Overwatch. There we go, that's at least one Overwatch. Alright, one of the core factors within Long War is to find options for flanks. We're doing exactly that. Good. Let's continue and try to get uh, the other targets down. Uh, Moving up. 74, 47%. Uh, Not really good odds, but we, we will have a lot of uh, shots, so... I am confident that we are going to at least kill one, and we can kill the other one with uh, Fury. I'm on it. 
Might as well use a grenade to reduce his ability to actually shoot us. And that's one of the problems of too many units. We cannot find good engagement angles. There we go. One more unit down. And let's overwatch. Good. We don't need to uh, panic with this overwatch since it's the last unit. We easily can remove the overwatch with another uh, flashbang. Don't need to be stingy here. And let's actually spread the love and give someone else another kill. Oh, the next mechanic that might be relevant. You've just seen a so-called grazing shot. Um, there is a higher chance to hit in long war, but there is kind of a small chance that your uh, damage will not uh, uh, will not deal the full weapon damage, but only half of the weapon damage, which takes um, or which was supposed to be designed to take the all or nothing uh, ness out of it. So sometimes you're simply doing less than full damage instead of doing nothing at all. Apparently there is still a last pack, so we killed seven, I th eight uh, so far. Let's move everyone up and uh, reload, and we're taking it from here. Reload Overwatch. Reload Overwatch. Some of the cases. Simply Overwatch. Alright, there's one more pack. Or maybe even only one more alien. I wasn't aware that we're fighting 11. I was pretty much under the impression it's only 9. I really like the high ground there. Wish we could use it a little bit more. On your order. Moving. Okay. So let's overwatch everyone. Yep, there is one more pack. And it probably will, in some shape or form, move into us. I'm, I'm trusting you here. We're green to go. Good, let's do another Overwatch trap here. Just need to get eye on uh, eyes on them. In long war, yet another thing that has changed is the uh, patrols are actually patrolling, so it's no longer a very artificial uh, placement of the packs. In normal XCOM, the way that the packs are being placed is. Uh, between you and the mission target, there's always at least one pod uh, at, at every single time. 
Um, and if you kill that pod, another uh, pod will move uh, into the position to replace uh, the one that you've just killed. Always with the intent to have someone between the player and uh, the uh, the mission target. Here it's different. Uh, you will see that uh, the um, aliens are actually patrolling. Well, surprise! We got them quite well here. And thanks to melee vulnerability, the sectoid is not a problem at all. Plus, we got some nice little extra loot out of it. Okay, Operation Gatecrasher was a full success. Now I'm asking myself, of course, which kind of promotions are we going to see? Since I do not have the Commander's Choice mod, which, by the way, for Long War is extremely helpful. It makes the game, specifically in the earlier parts, way, way easier. However, it also uh, takes away from the GTS, which is a core building. So it makes it much easier for you at the beginning. That's why I decided to not go with it. But the downside is we might end up with um, with uh, characters that are not 100% fitting. So I will talk about the promotions in a second. So uh, let's bear with me for one uh, more second. We got an Alarim core, which is great. We got a hair trigger, which is even better. Um, 25 supplies, a lot of corpses, drone wreck, and a sectoid corpse. That's good. First things first, let's go to research. We want to start our research with resistance communications just so that we can expand as fast as possible. Secondly, as for engineering, you will see that you can only build very few items because most of the conventional items are for free. You have as many flashbang grenades, as many uh, medkits, as many normal grenades as you want. Uh, that is part of the easier start, so you actually have normal military equipment. Uh, shape charge is one of the items uh, that deals with cover. Um, it is a very short range explosive with uh, very high destructive power to knock down walls. We're not going to use that for various reasons. I will explain li later why. Now, let's take a look at the soldiers and you will see oof, it looks way more difficult than before. But it isn't actually that difficult. Um, let's look at the most important stat, which is aim. 65 is the baseline. Everything above 65 is considered really good. Everything below it is considered mm, not so good. So we hit it quite well, uh, with only R Roby being the only one with a little bit subpar. Everyone else has really solid aim. And if we look at the other rookies, so it's actually quite good in some of the cases. Uh, the value number two, which is important, is the movement. Um, uh, 15 to, uh, 14 to 15 is the base. Uh, 15 is actually really good, um, everything above 15 is super good, and everything below is unfortunately not so good. Uh, as for us, only Mitch Mitchell eh, wasn't really catching up, hopefully he's becoming a sniper. Uh, he has an awesome aim, everything else would be uh, pretty much a waste. Hit points, um, 4 is the baseline, 3 is a little bit less than that, it can go up to 7 theoretically, I have seen that very seldomly. Uh, so 6 is usually the absolute maximum. And then you do have a dodge skill here, uh, which uh, let's not go through all of those details for now. Um, essentially, uh, aim is important, movement is important, hit points are important. Good. Now to the classes. I, I am hoping that we're getting some really good classes to level up. Keep in mind... Um, you, uh, we do have eight classes uh, and seven uh, level ups. So depending on what character um, gets which class, the others um, you you will get one character per class. 
first and foremost, and then others are being unlocked. So to a degree, you can uh, you can manage which one you are getting. So let's take someone like Zirkim here. Uh, average aim, really good average stats. I like it. He can he can be good in any class, which means we're going to promote him first. And Zirkim becomes an infantry, aka um, a ranger. Rangers are really good, can deal a lot of damage later in the game, and uh, we will go through his abilities as uh, the game progresses. You can he see here that uh, the training uh, center um, abilities are being um, displayed. Hit and run, by the way, is great for a ranger. Um... This here is also not too bad. You know, most of the stuff is good. He could have he could have gotten a bit better uh, better loadout, but that's fine. The hit and run actually is really is a really good ability. Um, good. So that's a solid choice. Now that we got the uh, ranger off the plate, let's take another average one. Uh, in this case, Dark Tower Noxos. And see what he is going to get. He's going to get the technician, one of the classes uh, which theoretically um, could also deal very well with low aim. The technician is a very interesting class. Uh, basically has rockets and a flamethrower plus a few other items. Not my favorite class to be honest, so Dark Tower, not sure if you're going to see the most action, but uh, since you're an an old comrade, I will probably make an exception. And maybe this year is going to be a gun-focused um, technician. So Dark Tower is becoming a technician. Great. Uh, which means one of the classes with lower aim is, uh, or that allows for lower aim, is off uh, the plate. Meaning, uh, we, might, uh, we might want to go for the high aim character just because we have a higher chance that a character class is selected which requires a higher aim. So, Mitch Mitchell, let's see what he's going to be. Pfft. He's going to be another class which really does not require any high aim. Also, not necessarily a class that requires a lot of movement, but yeah... Well, not the optimal uh, selection. Grenadier is basically a um, heavy soldier, but focused on grenades. It's okay. It's okay. Let's continue, because um, I want to make sure that we do have a sniper who, who has a high aim. So next up, Renvin. Renvin is going to be um, an assault, which requires a lot of um, movement. He's okay with that, and uh, he also requires. Yeah, well, aim is not bad, but it is not as required as um, as for other classes. It's actually quite fine uh, that he has an above average aim. Now, next up, um, Edgar Alien Poe. You could still be a sniper. And instead, Edgar Allan Poe is going to be a specialist. Well... That's good. He can be a good specialist. He also has a couple of really nice uh, skills down here. So, I actually like that. Um, let's continue. Tracy Elliott, above average aim. Let's be a sniper. game hates me. She's a shinobi, which is the uh, stealth and invasion class. And to be honest, we need a sniper. I don't want to make Roby a sniper with uh, 60 um, aim. I want him to actually see some action. At the moment, the only other class, let's see what we got. Um, 
We got uh, Shinobi and Assault, which are the both of the Assault classes. We got Technician and Specialist, which are the both special uh, Specialist classes. We got... Uh, no, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, Gunner and uh, Gunner and um, Sharpshooter are missing. Both of the classes actually would require a decent amount of aim. Gunner not so much, Sharpshooter... Yeah, uh, it's an advantage if you if you can hit your target, right? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do it either way. He might end up to be a gunner. Yep, there we go. That's not a bad choice. Um, the gunner with average aim is okay. I know how to build them and he will see uh, sufficient action. Let me color code them real quick. I will uh, pause and uh, we are going to take a look at them once they are color coded. All right, and back. So, uh, for those who haven't seen the campaigns, I us uh, usually like to color code. Black um, is going to be the technician. Blue is going to be the ranger or the infantry. Uh, brown is going to be the gunner. Um, as always, we have uh, the Templars in any form of um, purple or indigo. We do have assault as red, uh, green for specialists, yellow for gunners, orange for shinobis, and white for sharpshooters. Uh, but we don't have one yet. Good. Let's jump right into the game. So far, everything worked out well. Got to start investigating, and that brings us to the next uh, change. The whole globe here has been reworked quite a bit. Yeah, thank you for introducing the Templars. Great, love it. So the globe has been reworked quite a bit. Uh, you will see that um, there are a few changes here. Um, number one, there are a few values. Strength, Vigilance and Force. Let me explain all three of them real quick. Strength uh, determines how many aliens are within this area. So when we're going to do missions, uh, it is kind of the baseline. The higher the strength, the more aliens per mission. Vigilance is a factor that describes how aware uh, the enemies are about our activity. If it increases, strength will um, increase as well, so that uh, the um, aliens will shift actual troops into this area. And finally, force determines uh, the factor um, of uh, how um, how strong of um, uh, or which type of aliens uh, they can deploy. The next thing that you will see is um, within. Um, these regions we actually will have uh, quite a few um, quite a few resistance operatives and they can either do intel um, they can do supplies or they can recruit additional uh, resistance operatives we're going for intel which does not only provide us intel but also provides us with hints for potential missions the more intel uh, gathering you have the better it is and i'll talk a little bit about the strategy that i'm following um, once we get there so here we would have uh, the opportunity to um, actually purchase uh, an engineer right off the bat. I think that's something that I'm seriously considering, given that we do not have an engineer yet. Uh, so let's recruit one engineer. And you will see the person will pay for itself almost immediately. Um, as for the other items, I feel we can get rid of the Elarium Core for now. We can get rid of the Sectoid Corpse for now. So we're back to 95. We can get rid of some of the Trooper Corpses, but I want to keep at least some for research purpose and you can immediately see 
we're putting an engineer here for excavation purpose so it is going to pay for itself sooner or later we can either go for resistance ring or we are we can go for the gts the gts would use 40 more supplies so could we reach that That's 10, that's 30, well I really don't want to sell all of our corpses now, which means we are going to start uh, with the resistance ring and GTS is going to be the second building then simply means we have less selection about the classes but yeah can't change it we needed the um, engineer to immediately get going good so now it's time to get some missions which requires us to go to here and start scanning in the area if your um, avenger scans in an area it counts as if it would be four additional um, resistance forces um, scanning for intel and see they already found the first mission so now you can see that uh, first of all the uh, mission is smash and grab which is uh, basically a um, supply or resource and supply run and there is ample uh, time to infiltrate it infiltration is a new mechanic it essentially means uh, that you cannot bring uh, a full uh, what anymore for every single uh, soldier that you are fielding um, your time that the, that the soldier or that the soldiers need in order to quote unquote scout the the area will increase with increased uh, uh, time um, the enemy presence of aliens will grow so in very simple words um, you get the option to bring along a lot of uh, soldiers but that also means that you're fighting a lot of uh, the enemies here comes the concept of baseline enemy activity into play so uh, per default the baseline activity is currently seven to nine uh, which is uh, force one so um, or strength uh, strength uh, one or two so very um, very few aliens if we were to like load up um, let's say an entire squad of uh, rookies uh, you can see that with the more people we're bringing with us the more uh, this um, uh, total infiltration time will spike up and at the end of the day um, now instead of seven to nine we are expecting 13 to 15 enemies here um, the infiltration time is mainly influenced by the squad size modifier but also by the uh, by the amount of items uh, that each of them uh, brings with them we, w we don't want to end up in a situation where we um, where we have uh, higher than 100 um, percent or less than 100 percent infiltration specifically since uh, every uh, time that we fight against um, the advent forces we cannot collect um, the the loot that is there I'm going to take the Templar with us mainly uh, because um, he can move after he has attacked uh, so there is a good chance that he will essentially offer us um, even more loot because he can move to the crates and I could now like modify all of uh, the equipment here but in all reality it wouldn't change that we probably can field another operative um, we simply don't have enough time um, and now you can also see why you need to um, uh, detect the missions early the earlier you detect the mission the more time you have for infiltration which requires a lot of people on intel so that's going to be our force and we have five soldiers against seven to nine enemies if we were to put in another rookie 
79 or, um, starts to become uh, 13 to 15 so we're almost doubling the forces which is not worth it uh, might as well go with five Good, let's start the infiltration. And there's the next mission, right there. Eight days and 13 hours. We would get an engineer. Um, and believe me, you cannot have too many engineers, so might as well do that. Let me uh, find a good squad, uh, squad uh, to extract uh, this guy. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, back. Um, we're just fielding six rookies here. Um, we have plenty time to uh, to infiltrate that, and uh, hopefully all of them will get a promotion from it. The missions at the beginning are usually quite easy, specifically if you're if you're not um, messing up the infiltration timers. Um, as long as you keep it with 100% or above. You should be fine so we continue to scan but I'm not sure if we can even produce additional missions at this uh, at this point um, I think there's only there are only so many missions that can spawn parallelly in one uh, region that's uh, the whole reason why we are continuing to expand we have enough intel to do so we're continuing to research modular weapons our first target is going to be to go for laser uh, weapons uh, which are going to help us dramatically um, as for the regions I would like to go to West Africa first 100 intel deal setting course for west africa let's immediately expand because the second uh, region also means that we can get even further missions and that's the whole idea so the keystone uh, grab a uh, smash and grab mission uh, has just reached 100 percent which means we are going to launch it really soon. As for the new haven in West Africa, um, everyone here should start going for Intel as well. We need as many missions as possible. Once we have done this mission here, I think a new mission could, uh, can spawn. So we're continuing to farm missions um, for experience, which believe me is the most important uh, the most important factor in the early game. So, on our next episode, we're going to look for Operation Dark Savior. If you're as excited as I am for Long War Legendary Iron Man 2, uh, then uh, please uh, consider leaving a comment um, down below. Uh, maybe cheer on for this campaign and let's smash some aliens. See you very soon. Bye-bye.